Hamburg, den 14. Februar 1939. Heute beehrte unser geliebter Führer mit seiner Anwesenheit die Taufe des mächtigsten Schlachtschiffs, das die Welt jemals gesehen hat. 50.000 Tonnen groß, einen halben Meter des härtesten Panzerstahls rund um das Schiff und acht Geschütze von 42 cm Kaliber machen dieses Schiff in eine unsinkbare Festung. Das Schlachtschiff Bismarck wurde seinen Elementen von der Enkelin des eisernen Kanzlers übergeben. Dieser neue Beweis der deutschen Macht wird der Welt zeigen, dass die deutsche Flotte es mit jedem Feinde aufnehmen kann. This is London, Ed Murrow reporting. To an American reporter, there is something very special about the people of this city, this island, this nation. Never in the long and stormy history of Great Britain have her fortunes been as low as they are in this spring of 1941. Britain is fighting alone for her very existence, fighting desperately, yet her people remain steadfast and unflinching. Britain's allies have been defeated one by one as the dark stain of Nazi conquest spreads across the map of Europe. In Africa, Rommel is giving the 8th Army a very bad time. Greece has fallen, and the Luftwaffe continues to smash English cities. The worst news of all comes from the North Atlantic, where last month, German U-boats and surface raiders sank 600,000 tons of shipping. In this battle, Britain's lifeblood is at stake. This is the battle on which depends the future course of the war the future course of British history. The Battle of the North Atlantic is fought at sea, but it is directed from the Admiralty here in London. Buried deep in the ancient Admiralty building, 200 feet underground, is the war room. Here is the guiding brain and central nervous system of the British Navy. The Operations Division. HX-126, 61-23 North. Robert, sir. Take Captain Shepard's things and put them in the office. Aye, sir. Thank you. This, of course, is the message center for incoming and outgoing signals. These tubes lead to the wireless room just down the hall. Oh, Shepard. Anything wrong? That man's uniform. Oh, well, quite informal here about some things. You'll find it's much different from the bridge of a ship at sea. Is that so? Oh, yes, it has to be that. Uh, Shepard, this is Commander Richards, the duty plot officer. Captain Shepard is the new director of operations. <laughs> Don't let me interrupt your meal. <clears throat> Captain Shepard, second officer, Ann Davis. 
Captain Shepard's taking over from me. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Be nice to her, Shepard. If she ever got angry and walked out, we'd lose the war. Really? Well, seriously, you can depend on this young lady. I've done it more times than I care to admit. And be it, darling, will you, and get your plot report in as soon as possible? We mustn't be late for Jimmy's party tonight. Right up. I suppose I shouldn't shed a few tears at leaving this place, but quite honestly, I've hated the job. Too much responsibility, too much strain. I'm getting a command at sea. That's what I've always wanted. Congratulations. I hope you find one that doesn't involve too much strain. Yes, the point is, it's a different kind of strain. After all, if a man's going to serve in the Navy, he ought to serve at sea. Unless, of course, it's a man like yourself who's already seen a tremendous amount of action. He should still serve at sea. Yes. Well, I'd better get along. I'll say goodbye now, unless you have any questions. I don't think so, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. We thought we might be of some assistance, sir. Not knowing your way around yet, sir. Is there anything I can do for you? Um, yes, there is something you can do. A few moments ago, I saw Rating enter the war room without his jumper. From now on, everyone will be properly dressed at all times. I cannot have officers eating sandwiches on duty, Commander Richards, under any circumstances. I'm sorry, sir. Won't happen again. Excuse me, sir. I think you should know that Commander Richards stood two watches without relief and I'm he... sure Commander Richards doesn't need an interpreter, Miss Davis. I was also surprised to hear a Wren officer dressed by her Christian name. To me, this kind of informality is both irregular and inexcusable. Come in. Oh, Sorry to interrupt, sir. Priority signal. Thank you. Excuse me. Oh, Shepard. You know the Assistant Chief of Naval Staff? Yes, indeed, sir. Very well. How are you, Jonathan? I'm awfully glad to see you here. Thank you. I have a signal here, sir, from our naval attache in Stockholm. He reports two large German warships steaming through the Kattegat. What ships are they? He doesn't say. Think it might be the Bismarck? It's possible, sir. She's just completed three months' training in the Baltic. They couldn't pick a better time to break out, could they? With this creek business going on and our convoy scattered all over the ocean? I have a nasty hunch that's the idea, sir. I hope for once you're wrong. Can't afford to have that monster on the loose. Look what Scharnhorst and Neisner did to it. Twenty-two ships sunk. 115,000 tons. All in two months. And they don't have anything like Bismarck's firepower. She could stand off and sink every ship in a convoy without ever coming under fire. Shepard, get on to the Commander-in-Chief home fleet. Tell him we're not sure. But we're very much concerned. Tell him we'll let him have every scrap of information we get. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, and Shepard. Sir? I wish you'd prepare your recommendations. In case it is the Bismarck. Very good, sir. Pretty rough assignment for a new man on the job, isn't it? I suppose it is, sir, but I'm not worried about Shepard. He's one of the ablest men in the service. I'm also told he's as cold as a witch's heart. That may be a slight exaggeration, sir. I want a man who's cold. I'd like a man with no heart at all, no soul, just an enormous brain. The Battle of the North Atlantic is a grim business, and it isn't going to be won by charm and personality. We've had too much of that around here. I've known Shepard for years. We've served together before. He was quite different in those days. Any particular reason for the change? I suspect there are many reasons, sir. Reasons of a personal nature. Oh, I see. Well, how are we going to get the information on those two ships? We have an agent in southern Norway, sir, but... We'd better get in touch with him. We don't want to get in touch with him directly. It's much too dangerous. And there isn't time to go through Zurich or Stockholm. In this case, I'm afraid you'll have to make direct contact. Sir, this man is in Nazi-occupied territory. I realize that. 
All the same, we must get in touch with him immediately. I see. Enemy ships were sighted coming out of the Baltic. Obviously heading out to sea. Obviously not in the service of the king. Now, what have we got over here at Scarpa Flow? Battleships King George V, Prince of Wales, Battlecruiser Hood, and a few cruisers and destroyers. The rest of the fleet's out on convoy escort. Excuse me, sir. It's from Admiral Cunningham, sir. Situation in Crete is deteriorating. German airborne troops have captured Malamy Airfield. Why is it we never get our bad medicine in small doses? Perfect timing for an enemy breakout in the North Atlantic. Cunningham and his fleet busy down here in Crete. Somerville's got his hands full trying to reinforce Malta with Force H. Scharnhorst and Nyes now up here at Brest ready to come out again, so we must keep them covered. And 16 convoys to guard scattered all over the Atlantic. If we had a hundred more ships, we still wouldn't have enough. Sir, we've just had a signal from our agent in Norway. The message is incomplete. Sighted two enemy ships off Christian Sand at 0335, sailing due west. Cruiser Prince Eugen and transmission stopped abruptly at that point, sir. Did you try to get him back? Yes, sir. No further contact. Where is Christian Sand? Off here, sir. Southern tip of Norway. What do you think, ACNS? I don't think this man would have transmitted in the circumstances if it hadn't been something really important. Then we'll proceed on the assumption that it's Bismarck. May I suggest, sir, we put Coastal Command to work on air reconnaissance? By all means. Everything from Bergen southwards. Tell them to photograph everything that looks suspicious. I'll talk to Commander-in-Chief at Scarpa Flow. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. First sea lord in the line, sir. Commander in chief, sir. Hello, Jack. How are you? I'm fine. Those two German ships were sighted off southern Norway at 0335. One is the Prince Eugen, and we're not sure about the other. Do you think it's... I suggest you proceed on the worst possible assumption that it's Bismarck and she's trying to break out. All right. I may be wrong, but I can't think of anything worse at the moment. Yes, I quite agree, sir. We can't afford to let that ship get loose in the Atlantic. I'll come to immediate notice for steam, sir. All right. Goodbye. We're directed to assume that it's Bismarck accompanied by Prince Eugen. And they're attempting to break out into the convoy lanes. Now, gentlemen, they'd have four available passages, wouldn't they? There's the Denmark Strait, the passage south of Iceland, the Faroe Shetland Passage, and the Fair Island Channel between the Orkneys and the Shetlands. Anyone care to place a bet? What about the Iceland Faroes Channel, sir? Not too near our bases and plenty of room for maneuver. Well, why wouldn't you take the nearest exit? Fair Island Channel's only a few hundred miles. Much too close to our air patrol. You're of no help to me, gentlemen. All you're saying is that it could be any one of the four. Actually, of course, you're perfectly right. 
I'm afraid somehow or other we've got to guard them all. Have we any idea where they are now, sir? Nothing definite. Jenkins, <clears throat> check with Coastal Command if they're still carrying out a search. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Like two cruisers. That's what the pilot said. One's a cruiser, all right. The other one's Bismarck. Bismarck's been located in Norway. Definitely identified. Bismarck's in Grimstad Field. They want us to send everything we've got bombers, torpedo planes, everything. Howard. No luck, nothing. Visibility down to nil. Down to 200 feet, sir. Oh, you can't get a bombing run in weather like that. No, we came in as low as we could. 200 feet along the fjord here. Yeah. What convoy is that, Miss Jackson? OG-62, sir. Right. Now, Miss Davis, take the other fuser from OG-62 and put it with the home fleet. Good. Now, take the victorious from that convoy forming up in the Clyde, WS-8B, put it with the home fleet. Sir, operations home fleet calling. Director of operations? No, I'm sorry, we still have no information. Well, the weather's closed in over there, and the aircraft can't see a thing. Yes, as soon as, soon as I hear. Right, right, I will. Oh. Take the repulse from WS-8B and put her with the home fleet. Right. Home fleet looks better now, doesn't it? Well, yes, sir, but I wouldn't give much for the convoy. You do recall that uh, troop convoy, don't you, sir? Yes, I do. Well, they've got a long way to go around the Cape to the Middle East. This leaves them with practically no protection at all, sir. I'm quite aware of the circumstances, Miss Davis. In my opinion, this is a risk we have to take. We have to take, sir? Well, Shepard, what do you have in mind? I think we must reinforce the home fleet, sir. We can't expect them to patrol everything from here to Greenland with what they've got now. Well, where do we get the ships? We'd have to take ships away from other duty. Would involve some risk. We could take Victorious and Repulse off escort duty. That would give the Commander-in-Chief an aircraft carrier and another battle cruiser. What convoy were they covering? A W-8SB, sailing from the Clyde tomorrow. It's a large troop convoy, sir. 20,000 men. We'd be exposing them to a long and dangerous voyage without proper escort. Is that what you're recommending? Yes, sir. You're willing to gamble the lives of 20,000 men? I think there's a difference between a gamble and a calculated risk. Good for you, Shepard. Of course, sir. I realize it's, it's not an easy decision to make. The important ones never are. All right, go ahead and detach those two ships from the convoy. Inform Commander-in-Chief, Home Fleet. Aye, aye, sir. They're giving us victorious and repulse. And now we can send Hood and Prince of Wales out to support the patrols in the Greenland area. I want them ready to sail within an hour. Yes, sir. The Prince of Wales has civilian workers aboard, sir. Hmm? They're still making adjustments to the gun turrets. Well, if they finish their work on time, have them put ashore. If not, they'll have to sail with the ship. Aye, aye, sir. As far as the rest of the fleet's concerned, we'll wait here for some definite information. I suppose my nerves can stand it, if yours can. I've just been talking to Captain Shepard in London, sir. Mm. He says the visibility over the coast of Norway is absolutely <clears throat> nil. She may still be there. She may have sailed hours ago. What's the latest forecast? It's pretty bad, I'm afraid, sir. Looks like two days of very thick weather. The report is very good, Admiral. Two days of heavy overcast. Good news. Is it not so, Captain? It is, sir. Thank you, Bernard.
We have a most interesting chess game here, Lindemann. The important moves this time are the opening. To break out into the Atlantic would not be easy, sir. Yes, but we have the advantage, because they do not know what we are going to do. We can move out immediately, or we can hide for a while under this beautiful overcast. Also, we have a choice of four different exits. Group North has suggested the Iceland Faroes passage. You're not forgetting that, sir. We have to take orders from Group North. We do not have to take suggestions. Yes, sir. Lindemann, we have a great opportunity here. I do not intend to let Group North or anyone else lose it for me. There can be great glory in this voyage. Glory for the Third Reich. Glory for us. For you, sir. You are the fleet commander. I will see that you are not forgotten. I was forgotten after the last war. Until the Fuhrer came to power, I got no recognition, no promotion. I was ignored, just as Germany was ignored. The world only remembers the winners, Lindemann. We must make sure this time that it will remember us. I am sure it will. How soon can you get on the way? I can have steam in half an hour, sir. Captain, I want to be out of here in 15 minutes. Very well, sir. Signal Prince Eugene. Very well, sir. Signal from the Commander in Chief Home Fleet. An aircraft from Hatston has got through to Grimstad. There's nothing there now, sir. Nothing at all. Well, they've sailed. At least we know that much. Now we can get moving. Of all come by, sir. Thank you. All we can do now is wait and see what happens. That's the worst part of our job, the waiting. By the way, you have a son in the service, haven't you? Yes, sir. He's a Gibraltar. He's an air gunner in the Ark Royal. I bet you're glad he won't be mixed up in this Bismarck show. Why should I be glad? If you were, you wouldn't admit it, would you? Even to me. He's serving with the fleet. He must take his chance like everybody else. I see. There's an air vice marshal coming in later to help out on reconnaissance. Give him a briefing, will you? Very good, sir. You wanted to speak to the crew, Captain? Have they been alerted? Yes, sir. Ah, don't! Captain Lindemann, with your permission, I would like to address the ship's company. As you wish, sir. Thank you. Officers and men of the Bismarck, this is the fleet commander. I can now tell you that we are going out into the North Atlantic to attack the British convoy system. We are going to sink their ships until they no longer dare to let them sail. It is true, we are only two ships. But the world has never seen such ships. We are sailing in the largest, the most powerful battleship afloat. Superior to anything in the British Navy. Faster, we are unsinkable, and we are German. You cadet officers, you were selected by the highest authority to make this voyage. When you return to the fleet, you will have many inspiring stories to tell. Stories of German sea power. Stories of Nazi victory. To all of you, I say this. Never forget that you are Germans. Never forget that you are Nazis. Hitler! In the center, the main plot. What's there? Another convoy, sir. Right, carry on. 
Now, sir, over here we have the Hood and the Prince of Wales. They left Scarpaflow Flow 40 hours ago. Here we have the Repulse, the aircraft carrier Victorious, and the King George V. They've been steaming for approximately 18 hours. In this area, the cruisers Arethusa, Manchester, Birmingham. In the Denmark Strait, the cruisers Suffolk and Norfolk. As you can see, sir, our cruiser screen is spread out much too thinly. Now, if your people could get into the air... Can't fly reconnaissance missions in weather like this, you know. Now, we realize that, of course, sir. We must assume that the Bismarck, in company with the Prince Eugen, is going to attempt a breakthrough to the North Atlantic. But we don't know where, and we don't know when. If it's here, or here, then the Repulse and the Victorious and the KG-5 will have to do the job. If it's here, in the Denmark Strait, then the Hood and the Prince of Wales will have to go after her. I should think they could handle it very nicely. Well, sir, Hood's a great ship. So is the Prince of Wales. But she's fresh from the builder's yard. No training for her crew. In fact, in this emergency, she had to put to sea with some of the contractor's workmen still on board. The Bismarck's a tough proposition for any two ships. Excuse me, gentlemen. The first sea log can see you now. Oh, good. Thank you very much, Shepard. A pleasure, sir. Yes, sir. Right, sir. Yes, I will. Commander Richards, who's your relief? Uh, Dexter, sir. He's late, isn't he? A little, but I don't mind, sir. Well, I do. Tell him I'll require him for duty the next three nights. My dearest Tom. Come in. Thought you might like a cup of tea, sir, as long as you're not going to take any rest. What are you doing here, Miss Davis? I thought you were off duty. That Officer Simpson's down with flu. I'm just filling in. Oh, thank you. Would you file that for me, please? There's an air raid going on up top. Bad one? No, not very. Won't your family be worried about you? I have no family here. My father lives in Canada now. I thought that surely you must be married or something. No, sir. Nothing at all. Doesn't that seem a little odd, if you don't mind my saying so? I was going to be married last year, but it didn't work out. His fault or yours? He was at Dunkirk, but he was listed as missing in action. It's just a year ago. A year ago next week. He was a rather wonderful man. Not brilliant or dashing or anything like that, but just rather wonderful. I'm sorry. Actually, I think it helps to talk about these things, don't you, sir? No, I don't. As a matter of fact, I don't think it helps at all. Getting emotional about things is a peacetime luxury. In wartime, it's much too painful. But you can't turn off your emotions just because there's a war on. You can't do anything about your feelings. Yes, you can. <laughs> Director of Operations? Tell you why I called, Jonathan. Dexter's here in my office, and he has rather a special problem. I understand you've given him extra duties. Yes, sir, that's quite correct. I said I'd require him for duty the next three nights. It seems that his girl is an army nurse. And she's got orders to sail tomorrow night from Portsmouth. Well, sir, I'm very sorry that Dexter's young lady is going overseas, but surely that's beside the point. Don't you think you could make an exception? No, sir, I'm not prepared to make an exception for this officer, or any other, for that matter. Certainly not for reasons of personal convenience. Well, it's very simple, sir. Either you have discipline or you haven't. Well, I'm sorry, Dexter. Thank you, sir. By the way, Jonathan, there's a fleet commander aboard the Bismarck. Yes. Admiral Gunter Lutyens. Lutyens. You know this man? Yes, sir, I do. One of his cruisers sank my ship. Oh. Then you have a special interest in him. British lady in warning who sailed from Paris to Starbuck away to Earl this morning. Commander Richards, have a bunk made up in my office. 
Yes, sir. I want the latest report on all shipping in the North Atlantic. Enemy, friendly, and neutral. Yes, sir. Is there any air reconnaissance yet over this area? Not yet, sir. The weather's still too bad. You show two cruisers in the Denmark Strait. Is Suffolk back on station? Oh, we assume she is, sir, but we don't know for certain. She's quiet as a tomb. Also calls to 190. Starboard 15. Starboard 15, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very good, sir. Bloody fool. This blasted fog. It's like looking into a cake of ice. I can't see a thing. Don't know when you're well off. See something out there, it'll have 15-inch guns on it. Solid foot of armor plate. That's what the Bismarck's got. Who said so? The gunnery officer, that's who. Mm. Said for all the good our guns would do, we might as well throw crumpets at her. I wish someone had throw crumpet at me. Ship bearing green, four, five! Two ships bearing green, four, five! Hard port, full ahead boat. Hard port, full ahead boat, sir. Shall we follow them, sir? Steady on 130. Steady on 130. Yeoman, sir. Mick to Admiralty. Bismarck and cruiser sighted. Course south. My position. Give latitude and longitude. Get that off immediately in case we run into trouble. Aye, aye, sir. Check radar. Check your radar, Blob. I mean, a report from Suffolk, sir. They found her. Picked her up in the Denmark Strait. Bismarck and a heavy cruiser. 6645 north, 26 west. There, gentlemen. Course southwest. Now things are looking up. Tell the first sea lord immediately. Aye, sir. It's a good job we've got some heavy stuff in the area. Richards, let me have an intercepting course for Hood and Prince of Wales. Yes, sir. Sir? This one's from the Norfolk. Norfolk's there too, sir. She's with Suffolk. They're shadowing in thick fog using radar. I hope that radar works better than usual. If she decided to turn on them, she could blow them both out of the water. No. Lutyens is too clever for that. You'd rather shake off a pair of cruisers than stop to sink them. Course to intercept Bismarck is 310. Oh, that'll bring Hood in contact. Just about there. Just about here, sir. The intercepting course is 310 degrees. At full speed, we should make contact at 0300. I don't want to engage him until daylight. Give me a course and speed to intercept at dawn. Ah, uh, sir. At 27 knots, course 295. We should meet them at first light. We'll proceed on that course at that speed. Aye, aye, sir. Pass the word to Prince of Wales. Aye, aye, sir. Anything further, sir? Signal from flag, sir. Speed, 27 knots. 200 revolutions. 200 revolutions. Admiral's sir. intentions follow, sir. Very good. Wilson? Sir? Tell the captain we've gone on to 27 knots. Also, the Admiral's sending his intentions. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, Wilson. Sir? How are the uh, civilian workers enjoying themselves? They're loving every moment of it, sir. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm not sleeping in one of these bloody hammocks. Make a note, Walter, to speak to the captain. We'll have double beds put in. Oh, very funny. Well, I reckon it's a diabolical liberty. Never even had a chance to phone my wife to tell her what was happening. They were afraid she might not let you go. You can just imagine what she thinks I'm up to. Pity she's so wrong, innit? <laughs> you never believe this. Where are we going? That's what I want to know. A couple of minutes ago, we picked up speed. What's that for in the middle of the night? Captain speaking. Bismarck has been sighted in Denmark Strait. She's on her way out into the Atlantic, and we plan to tackle her about dawn tomorrow morning. You will be going to action station shortly after midnight, so get all the rest you can before then. I'm confident tomorrow is going to be a big day for us. Good luck, and good shooting. They can't do this to me. I'm in a reserved occupation. Well, I never thought a thing like this would happen. Fancy me fighting Germans on the high seas. Here, lad. You ever been in a battle before? Yeah, hundreds of times. Don't hardly give it a thought anymore. Huh. <coughs> SP31. 
Dr. Thorson. Suffolk and Norfolk still in contact. Hood and Prince of Wales are estimated 120 miles from Bismarck. Should be quite a show tomorrow morning. I know where I'd rather be. Excuse me, sir. What a time for Shepherd to take over. I hope he's getting all the help he needs. Help, sir? I didn't think he needed any help. Captain Shepherd is a very old friend of mine, Miss Davis. You'd be quite wrong if you judged him too harshly. He had his ship blown from under him last year up in Norway. This job here means promotion for him, but he can't wait to get another ship. As long as I've known Shepherd, only two things really mattered to him. His family and the sea. I didn't know he had any family, sir. His son is an air gunner serving in the Ark Royal. He and the boy are terribly close. And his wife? He hasn't spoken about her and I haven't asked. Signal from Commander-in-Chief Home Fleet, sir. Suffolk and Norfolk will continue shadowing tonight. They will make no attempt to engage the enemy. Right. Make to Hood and Prince of Wales. If enemy maintains present course and speed, you should make contact approximately 0510. Right, sir. And Dexter? Yes, sir. Add to that. Good luck. Very good, sir. I'm not strong enough for this sort of thing. Besides, I've got flat feet. Oh, shut up, Henry. If we're going to fight the Bismarck, I'm going to check why shut it. Yeah, and we better check that turbine. Come on, Henry. Anyway, I always get seasick. Hood and Prince of Wales are somewhere in here. Suffolk and Norfolk, the Port Bismarck and Prince Eugen here. If so, we shouldn't have long to wait. Should be getting light up there now. Signal from Suffolk, sir. Have sighted Hood and Prince of Wales, bearing southeast, distance 15 miles. That means they've made it. Good old Hood, she'll get them. Smoke bearing green 40, sir. Bismarck and cruiser bearing green 40, about 12 miles. Closing fast. Those are not cruisers, they are battleships. Captain, open fire on the leading ship. Target leading ship, stand by to open fire. Target leading ship. Stand by to open fire. Hard to pull up. Open fire when you have the range. Concentrate on Bismarck. Aye, sir. Let me know when you're ready to engage guns and then we'll turn. Aye, sir. Tell Prince of Wales to open fire when she's in range. Aye, sir. Hard to stop it. to starboard, Captain. Shoot!
Oh, it's gone. Good God. Yeoman. Yes, sir? Make the Admiralty from Prince of Wales. Tell them... Tell them the hood has blown up. Aye, aye, sir. Starboard 15. Starboard 15, sir. Starboard 15. Signal from Prince of Wales, huh? Well, what is it? It says HMS Hood has blown up. Bring it here. Signal from Suffolk, sir. Hood sunk. Prince of Wales and Bismarck exchanging fire. Fire! <laughs> Badly damaged, sir. She's turning away and making smoke. Do you want to pursue? No. You have more important work to do. Hold your course. Steady on present course. Very good, sir. Captain, congratulations. It's a great moment for the German Navy. Yes, Lindemann. And for the two of us. Good morning, HMS Hood, largest British warship, was sunk by the German This is London, Ed Murrell reporting. This island, which is no stranger to bad tidings, received news today that HMS Hood, largest warship in the British fleet and pride of the British Navy, has been sunk by the German battleship Bismarck. From the Hood's complement of 1,500 men, there were three survivors. In the same engagement, the battleship Prince of Wales was badly damaged. Two British capital ships have been put out of commission, and the most powerful battleship in the world is now loose on the high seas. It remains to be seen whether the British Navy has the capability at this crucial moment of concentrating enough sea power to deal with the situation. There is undoubtedly great rejoicing in Berlin tonight and also on the Bismarck. Here's to the ship, Lindemann, and here's to us. You've beaten the best you have. Do you realize that? Yes, sir. They will never stop us. Not now. You wanted the damage control report, sir. What is it? We received one hit, forward on the port side, over number two fuel tank. We are losing a little oil. Anything serious? No, sir. I would say the damage is very slight. However, I would recommend we put about and have it repaired. Put about? 
You mean go home? Yes, sir. We could refuel at the same time. Are you mad? We're fought our way out into the Atlantic. This is no time to turn and run for home. We wouldn't be running, sir. We won a tremendous victory. But it is not the victory that was ordered. You haven't been close to the high command, Lindemann. Do you know what will happen when Admiral Rader reports the sinking of the hood? The Fuhrer will smile. And everyone else will smile. And then, a few moments later, he will turn to Rader with a scowl. What about the convoys, Rader? Have they sunk any convoys? There will still be plenty of convoys, sir, after we make repairs. Is your ship unmaneuverable, Captain? Are the guns damaged? Anything out of action? No, sir. Then we will push forward, as instructed by the High Command. But surely, sir, the Führer must realize that Are he... Are you now going to tell the Führer what he must realize? No, sir. Then do not tell me. For the time being, we will hold our present course and speed. Yes, sir. There will be no further statement to the press, not for the present. Aye, sir. Make a signal to Admiral Commanding First Cruiser Squadron. Suffolk and Norfolk must maintain contact with the Bismarck so that home fleet can intercept. Continue shadowing as long as you have fuel to do so. Aye, sir. Excuse me, sir. This is Bismarck's latest position, course, and speed. Send it to the CNC home fleet right away. Now, Shepard. At its present speed, sir, the home fleet cannot make contact with Bismarck until tomorrow. And then, only if she maintains her present course. And what if she doesn't maintain her present course? That's it exactly, sir. They won't make contact at all. Prime Minister for you, sir. First sea lord here. And now a first sea lord. I want to make it unmistakably clear that there is absolutely nothing as vital to the nation at this moment as the destruction of the Bismarck. You are authorized to employ any means at your disposal, regardless of risk and regardless of the price that must be paid. This is a battle we cannot afford to lose. I understand, sir. I don't care how you do it. You must sink the Bismarck. Good luck to you. Thank you, sir. Well, gentlemen, any suggestions? In my opinion, sir, we cannot leave this entirely to the home fleet. We must reach out and pull in everything we can lay our hands on. I've ordered Rodney to leave her convoy. She was the last available ship. I don't suggest this lightly, sir. Down here at Gibraltar, we force H. Renown, Sheffield, Ark Royal. I can't strip the Western Mediterranean with this Crete business going on. Perhaps if we left Ark Royal down there and sent the other two out. No, sir. We may need Ark Royal's aircraft. What do you think, Casey Elliott? It's taking a serious risk. I know Shepard has weighed that very carefully. In view of what the Prime Minister said, we don't seem to have much choice. Well, I may be able to argue with you two, but I can't quarrel with the Prime Minister. Order Force H to sail at the earliest possible moment. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Johnson. Smith. It's not for you, boy. Spadden. Singer. Shepard. Any other? Oh, thanks. Thompson. Thompson, where are you? My dearest Tom, I'm really much too tired to write. But I think of you so very often that I'm always afraid there may be things I will forget to mention. Marvelous. No letter again. Well, what are we after this time? That's that I'd like to know. Here, by the way, Tom, is it true your father's director of operations? Yeah, I'm afraid it is. Yeah, well, he's got a nerve moving us out of Gibraltar. Yeah, and just when we get fixed up with a couple of girls. Why don't you drop him a line, Tom? Tell him we don't want to go to sea. Well, it's my fault, really. I thought you blokes would like a couple of months in England. Did yeah. you say couple England? Of months? You're kidding. Not at all. You see, my girl's in London. That's what gave me the idea. Do you mean to say you asked your father if they wouldn't dare? Well, not in more time. Oh, go on. Your father would do the same for you, wouldn't he? This is the captain. I thought you'd be interested to know. We shall be operating in the Atlantic for a while. We've got orders to go out after the Bismarck. And we shall stay. No! No! Oh, no! Oh, 
Bismarck holds her present course and speed. When's the earliest we can engage her? Nine o'clock tomorrow morning, sir, at best possible speed. If Norfolk and Suffolk can keep track of her, they can guide us in. I suppose Bismarck gives them the slip. Well, if she shakes off those cruisers during the night, if we once lose contact, we may never get hold of her again. She's got the weather on her side, sir. Looks very bad for tonight. Yes, we've got to try and slow her down before nightfall. Summers, do you think Victorious could launch an airstrike? Well, she's supposed to be getting her deck landing training in the Mediterranean, sir. Most of her pilots have never flown off the carrier. I'm afraid they have to start their training now. Detach Victorious from the fleet. Tell her to close Bismarck at 30 knots, and she's to launch an airstrike as soon as she gets within 100 miles of the enemy. Aye, aye, sir. That's all, gentlemen. <laughs> Signal Prince again that she's to proceed on her course and make for Brest. Yes, sir. We will keep the enemy cruisers occupied until Prince Hergen is out of sight. All right, Captain, you can make your turn. Out of port! Out of port! Stand by to open fire! <laughs> Radar plot, range decreasing, decreasing very rapidly. Range down to 22,000 yards. Double back on us, sir. There she is, sir. Out of port, full ahead, boat. Out of port. Next move. Next move, full ahead, boat. Signal to Prince again. Goodbye and good hunting. That's all, Becker. Very good, sir. Cease fire, Captain. Cease fire. Cease fire, sir. Signal to group rest. Prince again successfully detached and proceeding independently. Have been unable to shake off enemy cruisers because of radar. Will attempt to break away during the night. Thank you, Miller. Very good, sir. All right, Captain. You may resume your original course. Starboard 20. Starboard 20. Starboard 20. One hit from the port bar, sir. What is the damage? Very slight, sir. And no one wounded. We will have the damage repaired in a few hours. That is good. That is good. Lederman. Yes, sir? If there were submarines in this area, we would zigzag, wouldn't we? Of course, sir. And the cruisers following us would be obliged to do the same. Yes, sir, but I would... Captain! 
I want you to set a zigzag pattern. Hold speed at 20 knots. In exactly two hours, we shall stop zigzagging and proceed at full speed in whatever direction we are headed. We will be out of radar range before they realize that they have lost us. 2112 West, course 095. This hit Victoria's claims. It hasn't slowed Bismarck down at all. I know, sir. She's been zigzagging now for more than two hours. That's odd. You must know we haven't any submarines in the area. I wonder if Victorious can get off another strike tonight. I'm afraid not, sir. It's too dark now. Signal from Norfolk, sir. Yes. What is it? Sir, they've... They've lost contact with Bismarck. This is London. Over 24 hours have passed since the battleship Bismarck destroyed HMS Hood. It is reported that the British have attacked the Bismarck with aircraft from a carrier. But Berlin says the attack was beaten off successfully. Berlin adds that Bismarck was able subsequently to shake off the surface vessels pursuing her. The German battleship has survived the heaviest guns and ships in the British Navy. And the gloomy speculation now is that the British Navy may have trouble finding her, let alone destroying her. Of one thing we can be sure, the lights will burn late in the Admiralty tonight. This is her last known position, and this, her father's done. That means she has to be somewhere inside that circle. In this sector, search aircraft from Victorious. To the south and west, the cruisers Suffolk and Norfolk. That leaves two possibilities. Either she's broken back to Germany, or she's headed for one of the French ports. Ah, Miss Davis, if you were Bismarck, what would you do? Well, I suppose I'm not very brave. I'd head for home, sir. Uh-huh. And a very sensible thing to do, too. Plenty of fuel, good repair facilities, complete protection. And not Lutjens, or any other German fleet commander. Why not? Because in Nazi Germany, he'd lose face. I've fought these people before. They have to prove their superiority every day. That's their one tremendous weakness. Sir? Yes? Signal from the Commander-in-Chief. King George V is running short of fuel. Can't maintain full speed much longer. Supposing she is heading for a French port. It won't be long before she gets friendly submarine support and complete air cover. Too late to stop her then. Sean, Horst and Eisenhower at Brest. Supposing Bismarck joins up with them and all three of them decide to come out together. What then? What's the trouble? He just collapsed, sir. I think he's got a temperature. Take him in the office. Why is this man on duty if he's sick? I don't know, sir. He didn't report sick. Bring the sick bay and get someone over here. Aye, right, aye, sir. Sims, take over. All right, leave him here. Aye, right, sir. I'm sorry about this, sir. If you had a temperature, why the devil didn't you report sick? I'm oh, sorry, sir. I didn't want to miss anything. All right, Brown. We'll get you along to the sick bay. If anything happens, I'll let you know. Thank you, sir. What time is it, Miss Davis? About 6.30, sir. Morning or evening? It's a very fine morning. And I think you should go on up and take a short walk. You haven't been outside this building for five days. Take down this message for Commander-in-Chief Home Fleet. Our interpretation of best available information indicates Bismarck heading for the coast of France. Proceed accordingly. Excuse me, sir, but do you have to stick your neck out quite so far? I'm afraid that goes with the job. Make to Admiral Commanding Force H. Proceed to intercept Bismarck on assumption she's headed for Brest. Suggest search by aircraft from Ark Royal. Your son is in Ark Royal, isn't he, sir? Yes, 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 he is. And get that off immediately, will you? Yes,
come in, Miss Davis. Signal for you, sir. Thank you. This is a report on the Ark Royal's air search. I haven't found a thing. You better tell Captain Shepard. Yes, sir. Also, two of Ark Royal's aircraft failed to return to the carrier. No need to tell him that. I should think it can't possibly do any good. No, sir. By the way, Miss Davis, how would you like a trip to America? America, sir? Hmm. The Admiralty is sending a mission over to discuss a master plot for convoys. Two regular officers and a Wren officer. The board picked you as first choice. I must say it sounds very exciting. There'll be no change, of course, until this Bismarck thing is settled. Then I think you'd better have a talk with Captain Shepard. Aye, sir. And thank you very much. Yes, it would have to be long-range aircraft. Catalina's, I should think. Yes, that's right. Call me back. Shepard. Sir? Seems to me our forces are very heavily committed to a single course of action. Is that based on the definite knowledge that Bismarck is headed for one of the French ports? On definite knowledge, no, sir. It's based on my summing up of the general situation. I felt it was a decision that had to be made. I hope you're right, Shepard. I hope to God you're right. A report from Ark Royal, sir. They haven't found anything. All right. Uh, you off now, Miss Davis? Yes, sir. My watch ends at seven. Well, I seem to have a devil of a lot of work to do. Do you think you could stay an hour or so and help me out? Well, of course, sir. I have a dinner date, but that's not until nine. Good. Well, let me have the latest information on the availability of aircraft in Force H. Aye, sir. Coastal Command will activate two crossover air patrols. The northernmost will cover possible enemy courses from Brest to La Rochelle. The southernmost will cover La Rochelle to Cape Finisterre. Good. Now, if you'll coordinate that with Coastal Command, I'll get on with the business of Force H. And you can run along and enjoy your dinner date. What, at half past one in the morning, sir? Oh, I'm sorry. I had no idea what time it was. Uh, by the way, Miss Davis, I'd like to make arrangements for you to work with me full time, if you think you could face it. Uh, what I had in mind was to take you off your present duties and make you my assistant. Well, I appreciate you thinking of me, sir. I need someone who's intelligent and dependable. Quite honestly, someone like yourself. Well, what do you say? I don't know quite what to say, sir. I, I'd make an effort not to be so rude as I have been in the past, if that's what's bothering you. It isn't anything like that. If you want to say no, please say so. Well, you see... Director of Operations. Oh, one moment, please, sir. It's Captain Farnham, casualty section. Richard, yes? What sort of bad news? Is there no other information? I see. Yes, I appreciate your telling me. Thank you, Richard. My son's missing. His plane ran out of fuel, failed to return. Terribly sorry, sir. There's a good chance he'll be picked up. He will be picked up. When I got out of hospital, all I could think about was getting back to London. I wanted to see my wife. I took a taxi from Waterloo as I drove into Welbeck Place. Everything looked so familiar. Every house was just as I remembered it. Every house except mine. There was a large black hole in the ground where my house had been. <laughs> where my wife had been. I 
I didn't think it was possible to feel such pain. I know. I've been through it myself, and I know. I swore that night I'd never again get emotionally attached to a human being as long as I'd lived. But I made one mistake. I forgot about... I forgot about my son. You can't avoid pain by fencing yourself off. Sometimes you need the help of other people more than anything else. But you have to let them get close enough to help. I don't want any help. I found when I was deeply troubled that I needed people very badly. People want to be needed. I found that out too. We're in business again. Bismarck's been spotted by a Catalina flying boat, headed for Brest. Your hunch was right, sir. Excuse me. Sir, Captain Shepard has offered me a new job, to be his assistant. I'd like very much to take it, and I hope you'll have no objection. Jonathan, what have you done to that girl? She's just been offered a marvelous opportunity to go to America. I mean, sure, promotion. Now she's turning all that down just to stay here with you. I don't understand it. Well, here's the situation. The flying boat spotted Bismarck at 1030 and has been shadowing ever since using cloud... Co Jonathan. I'm sorry, sir. As you were saying? The flying boat spotted Bismarck at 1030 and has been shadowing ever since using cloud cover. From time to time, Bismarck has put up very heavy anti aircraft fire. And now the British know where we are. They'll send out everything they have. We can sink anything they send out. What was your latest fuel report? We have lost about 200 tons from the tanks that were damaged. We have 35% left. That is more than enough. I want to check the plot. Becker. Yes, sir? Keep me informed about the fuel situation. I will, sir. I have requested air cover from the Luftwaffe. How soon can we expect them to be with us? The shore-based aircraft can operate approximately that far from the coast, sir. We will arrive at that point about dawn tomorrow. What about King George and Rodney? What is their position now? Based on reports from Group West, I have them plotted 200 miles to the north of us, sir. Well, that is good. They cannot possibly overtake us now. <sighs> and they are so impressed to make repairs and then we come out again with our tanks full. Also, Lindemann, I have an idea. Suppose Sean Horst and Kneisenau came out with us. We will be the most powerful fleet that ever sailed. Nothing in the world could touch us. Excuse me, sir. Personal signal for the fleet commander. Thank you, Miller. Best wishes on your birthday. Look. Adolf Hitler. This is a great honor. Yes, please. Here are the fuel consumption reports for KG-5 and Rodney, sir. As close as I can calculate. Don't look too good, do they? No, sir. They're 140 miles astern of Bismarck. Can they steam at full speed long enough to overtake her? If they did, sir, they wouldn't have enough fuel to get home. By daylight tomorrow, Bismarck will be in range of German air cover. They'll send out the whole Luftwaffe to bring her in. And a line of U-boats as well. What we have to do is slow her down by tonight so home fleet can overtake her before she gets into friendly waters. Well, Renan and Sheffield can't do it. The thieves are royal. Ten hours of daylight left. Call it nine and a half. It's time to get off one airstrike anyway. With luck, they might get off two. Yes, sir. You'd better get in touch with Ark Royal. Ajax 136. Your torpedoes have been fitted with the new magnetic exploders, so you should get very good results. You have Bismarck's position, course, and speed. She's now 24 miles away, bearing 183 degrees. You can't mistake her, she's all by herself, so make your attack immediately. Well, there's just one final word. The home fleet's 100 miles astern. Unless you stop Bismarck today, they'll never catch up with her. It's up to you, gentlemen. 
Good day. Sheffield's been detached from the flagship, sir. She's ordered to close Bismarck and shadow her. How long ago? This was sent an hour and a half ago, sir. An hour and a half? It uh, wasn't decoded immediately, sir, because it wasn't addressed to us. We uh, just happened to pick it up, sir. Our pilots have orders to attack any ship alone in that area. Get down below and send a message to all aircraft. Look out for Sheffield. Send it in plain language and get it off immediately. Aye, aye, sir. Bit of a cock-up somewhere. Bismarck, all right. It's all right. They're ours. Swordfish. Sounds as if they're going to fly right over us, sir. They're using our position to get their bearings. I can see them now, sir. There they are. They're attacking us. Pull ahead, both. Power the port. Pull ahead, both. All guns, hold your fire. Aye, aye, sir. We all feel the same about what's happened, so there's no point in discussing it. I'd just say that we've learnt a very important lesson which may well prove a blessing in disguise. All right, let's get on with the job. There's still enough light for one more attack. Think you're up to it? Yes, but what about those magnetic explosives? They're being changed at this moment. We'll go back to contact explosives on the torpedo. Keep your seats, gentlemen. I have a message here from the Commander-in-Chief. Unless the enemy's speed has been reduced by midnight, King George V will have to abandon the chase and turn back for refueling. There's no need to tell you what that means. This is our last chance, gentlemen. I suggest you go below and get something to eat. We'll be taking off at 18.30. on the armor plate emissions. No serious damage, sir. Thank you, Miller. The damage control will keep us informed. Yes, sir. Thank you. 
Captain. Get in the steering compartment, sir. Put your rudder midships. Rudder midships. The rudder won't move, sir. What ships are these? Both destroyer flotillas. They're getting close. We picked up two very peculiar reports from Coastal Command following the attack by Ark Royal. The first one says Bismarck circling. The second one reads Bismarck headed nor nor west. Nor nor west? But that's impossible, sir. Should be headed straight for KG5 and Rodney. Mm, it sounds like faulty identification. Wrong ship, most likely. Sir, signal from Sheffield. They made contact with Bismarck. She's steering north at ten knots. Well, that's incredible. It must be Bismarck. Now, what's she doing on that course and at a speed of ten knots? Hit by a torpedo, I'll bet. And damaged. Propellers? Could be, sir. Or rudder and can't manoeuvre. We've got a chance now, sir. I think we've got a chance. the Bismarck, all right. Yemen? Truck. Make to Solon. Intend to attack with torpedoes. Ships turning to port. Firing range, 4,000 yards. All right, sir. Bring on 30 knots. 300 revolutions. From Captain D's up. Speed, 30 knots. Turning to port to fire torpedoes. Firing range, 4,000 yards. Good, then it is the Bismarck. Damage control. Damage control. Damage control, sir. Captain speaking. I want a report on that radar. The divers are down now. They'll be up in a moment, sir. Range 6,000 yards, sir. Huh? Yes. I see. It's impossible to free the rudder, sir. It was jammed too badly, that explosion. How early in the morning can you put a couple of divers over the side? At first light, sir. About five o'clock, if the sea's not too rough. I do not care about the sea. I was thinking about the men, sir. Sir, for the fleet commander. Thank you. Ah. Group West is sending out Three seagoing tugs. All submarines in the area have been ordered to concentrate at this point. That is good. That is very good. Range 5,000. Attention all hands. Attention all hands. This is the fleet commander. We are having some difficulty repairing the damage to our steering gear. But I assure you, there's no cause for alarm. 4,500 yards, sir. Stand by the torpedo tubes. Stand by the torpedo tubes. By morning, we will be in good hands. And if the British home fleet should be foolish enough to appear, they will be torpedoed by U-boats. Meanwhile, let me remind you that our guns have not been damaged. This is still the most powerful ship afloat. I have in my hand a message. Addressed to the entire crew. All justice is at your side. Your gallantry is an inspiration to our people. You will forever occupy a place of honor in the history of the Third Reich. This message is signed by the Fuhrer. Range 4,000 yards. 420. Power when the sights come on. Two enemy destroyers on port bow, sir. Alarm port. Alarm port, sir. Range 4,000, bearing 300 degrees. Guns ready, port. Guns ready, port, sir. Illuminate with star shell. Illuminate with star shell.
They've seen us. Nowhere for it. 20 degrees to go, sir. Bar! All torpedoes gone, sir. Let's get out of here. Hard a port. Hard a port. Open fire, main armament. Sir. Good man. Fire! She's got the Solent. Good shooting, Lindemann. Cease firing! Cease firing! One hit on the armor near the forward boiler room. The damage can be repaired and it won't affect our speed, sir. Thank you. That is good. Destroyers are still shadowing, sir. They've orders to keep track of the Bismarck until the home fleet closes. They claim three hits with torpedoes. It hasn't even slowed her down. What about the reports of enemy submarines? ACNS says these have been confirmed. I've notified the Commander-in-Chief. What's CNC doing about it? He hasn't altered his plans. I'd like to send him a signal telling him to be careful, but I'm sure he'd resent it. Cigarette? Uh, th thank you, miss. All right, I'll be here if you want me. Very good, sir. Shepard. Sorry about your son. Sir. Captain Shepard, sir. Hmm? Excuse me, sir. I took in an operational signal from one of the destroyers shadowing the Bismarck. They picked up three flyers in a rubber boat. Must have been over an hour ago, so I couldn't get off in time. I heard about your son, so I thought I'd tell you. It might not be him at all, sir, but you never know. Thank you. Thank you very much. Speed six and quarter knots, 32 ships. Oh, sir, ACNS has been calling you, sir. It says it's very urgent. Assistant Chief of Staff, please. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Shepard here. Jonathan, I've got the most marvelous news. Your son is alive and well. He's been picked up by a destroyer. This is absolutely official, son. I've got the message half an hour ago. Jonathan? Oh, don't you understand, Jonathan? Your son is alive and well. What did he say, sir? He didn't say anything. Well, you excuse me, sir. Signal for Captain Shepard. I'll take it. It's from King George V. What is it? They've sighted Bismarck, sir. Well, here comes the main event. How much fuel have we got left? We shall have to break off action in two hours, sir. Main armament ready. Enemy speed, ten knots, course three five oh, sir. They are numbers two to one, and we count to more than ten knots. 
What are you saying, Captain? This is the Bismarck. We still have all our guns, and any moment now the Luftwaffe will arrive. <laughs> Open fire, Captain. Open fire. Open fire. Shoot. Fire. Shoot. She's hit. Good shooting, Captain. Shoot. Signal from King George V, sir. Bismarck on fire amidships, turf or turrets out of action. Right. I thought I'd be cheering, sir, at this point, but I'm afraid I can't. I know, it's always that way. Shoot! <laughs> Hoffman, we have to fly the forward magazines. Get the men out. They can't get out, sir. They're trapped by the fires. There's too much danger of blowing up. Flood them. What about the men? I gave an order, Hoffman. Fly the forward magazines. Flood the forward magazines. Fuel state is critical, sir. Get closer, get closer. We've got to finish her now. Shoot! All guns out of action, except a turret, sir. Where is your Luftwaffe now, sir? I don't understand it. The Fuhrer promised. Promised to see. He was proud of that. said that only yesterday. He was frightened. I... Sir, all the officers on the bridge. 
which are dead. I have to tell you that all the guns are finished. <laughs> finished. Tell the men to abandon ship. Abandon ship. Abandon ship. She's finished. The Dorsetshire has joined us, sir. Tell Dorsetshire, finish her off with torpedoes. Aye, aye, sir. Cease firing. Cease firing. Doors should stand by to pick up survivors. Aye, aye, sir. Jenkins? Sir. Major Admiralty, Bismarck is sunk. Fleet is returning to Scarborough Flow. Aye, aye, sir. Well, gentlemen, let's go home. The minister would like to see us tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. I assume you can make yourself available. Certainly, sir. Well, why should he want to see me? I don't know. Seems to think you had something to do with this operation. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Well done, Jonathan. Thank you, sir. Petty Officer Williams? Sir. Take a message for telegraphist Brown in the sick bay. Tell him that Bismarck's been sunk. Aye, aye, sir. May I offer my congratulations too, sir? Thank you. Uh, uh, take a message. Request pleasure of the company, second officer Ann Davis, at dinner. Accepted. Good. Now, I know you must be very tired, and it's nearly nine o'clock, but how about tonight? Right now. I get my pay. Great heavens, it's nine o'clock in the morning, and I asked you out to dinner. We could always make it breakfast, couldn't we? Why not? You know, Harvey, these boys worry me. Four stripes on his army don't even know what time of the day it is. 